Hey guys, I am Pixel Dan, and today we are going to be checking out the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 4 pack from the folks over at NECA Toys. That is right, my friends. NECA did it. They finally did it. They gave us toys from arguably the worst of the Turtles movies. <laughs> but those samurai outfits, come on, they make great designs. They're very toyetic. So as a Turtles fan, very excited for this particular set. Uh, this was a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive for 2023, but of course was also made available through their website. And the one that I pre-ordered through there just showed up. So I'm very excited to check this out. But first things first, you can see that they come in this massive box here um, that is meant to resemble the old VHS packaging, which is very cool because if you've been following this line for a while, you'll know that they did the exact same thing with Turtles 2, Secret of the Ooze, and of course, the original Turtles movie as well, which is what I've got sitting right here, um, which is where this whole thing kind of kicked off with our movie figures, which is pretty cool to see. So look at that. If you've got all of these boxes, they do make a pretty great display piece there as well. Of course, if we flip this around to the back side, you can see it continues mimicking a VHS slipcase, but it has images of the turtles rather than scenes from the film, uh, which look great. You can almost not tell them apart. <laughs> it's awesome. We got an explanation here. It shows you everything that comes with this set. And we even have a quote up here. Uh, shout out to my good friends over at the Yes Have Some podcast for getting on the back of the box. That's pretty awesome. And uh, welcome, welcome to the Elite Club, my friends. Okay, so the VHS box works like a slipcover, like an actual VHS. Go figure. So you can pull that slipcover off. And that, of course, reveals a window showcasing all of our action figures inside, all of the accessories. Good grief, this is a very tall box. It's so hard to film up here. Uh, let's go ahead and get this opened up. We're going to get a closer look at those awesome figures within. All right, we got these guys opened up. We're going to use Leonardo here as our primary example in the beginning. Uh, so as you can see, the figures do stand just over six inches tall. Um, so they do match up with the rest of the figures in your NECA TMNT movie lineups around that seven inch scale there. Um, and as you can see, very cool design going on with these guys being modeled after the looks of the characters in TMNT 3 with our samurai outfit on. And honestly, I love the design of the outfit itself. I mean, all the paint deco looks really great on here. The colors, the sculpting, really cool stuff. Uh, Leonardo, of course, is a bit unique because he also has the sword sheath on his back where I do have his katana blades currently stored. Uh, you can see really cool pattern that is painted on to the outfit that he's wearing there. Um, so lots of things to talk about here as far as their samurai uniform is concerned. First of all, head sculpts on these guys, they're really well done. And I mean that as in they did a great job of capturing the really goofy masks that are seen in TMNT 3. Uh, there aren't giant eye holes uh, here, but actually you can kind of see these little dips right there. I think that's what that is. A little nod to the clearly visible eye holes <laughs> that you can see in the masks on Team NT3. They also have these, these really big kind of goofy looking eyes. Uh, you know, they're a little extra spotted on these versions there, but they look really good. So let's talk about the body and the articulation before we move forward, uh, because the turtles are sharing these basic bodies right here. So the head is on your standard ball joint. So as you can see, the head will roll around, look up and down. Uh, the bandanas here are really long and just lay on the uniforms there, just like they do in the movie. The arms uh, have the joints at the shoulders that allow the arms to go outwards, forwards, and backwards. You've got that swivel at the elbow. You have a standard elbow bend. You've got the swivel at the wrist and the hinge at the wrist. These are also on pegs, and they are interchangeable there. The torso doesn't really have a ton of movement. You can see there's probably a ball joint down here at the waist, so it does turn side to side. It does roll around. You can hear it kind of creaking in there, though, uh, the way it's kind of rubbing on the plastic uh, in the uh, sculpted uniform bits down here. Um, with the th legs, you can see at the thighs there, 
uh, we got those ball joints on the inside. So the legs can go outwards. They can move forwards and backwards. The joints are very tight here. And, you know, with the big sculpt of these baggy pants on the legs, they do feel like they are hindered a little bit. Like, I don't think you're going to get, like, incredibly dynamic poses out of these guys. But, you know, it moves pretty good. Feels pretty solid on there. You do have bends at the knees. Again, definitely being hindered by the sculpt of these baggy pants. You can also swivel at the knees. And then you've got the hinge joints at the ankles that do allow the ankles to move forwards and backwards as well as rock side to side. One thing I definitely want to point out is that with all four of my turtles right out of the box, the legs were like very stiff like from the knees down uh, where it seems like the paint and like you can actually see a lot of paint kind of rubbing off maybe you can see that i don't know there's a lot of paint uh already kind of scratching off at the hinge joint there at the ankle so i don't know if the paint is like dried and that's what kept it from moving but i would definitely be very careful especially when you're moving these ankles right out of the box you might want to do you know the hair dryer trick or warm water and kind of give them that bath just to loosen them up a little bit just work it out i did that with mine and the joints do seem to be working a lot better they stand well they're solid so i haven't had any issues but it's definitely something i want to urge you guys to be very careful with um watch those ankles especially when you're pulling these guys out of the box so uh with each of these figures you're also going to get the soft goods robe piece of the samurai uh, armor that they are wearing throughout the entirety of the movie where they're wearing the actual samurai gear. These are really nice because they have wires in them on either side, which allows them to kind of be posed a bit, which I really, really like. Um, all of them do also have this slit going down the back. This is going to be good specifically for Leo. He's the only one that has uh, like the sword sheath on his back, obviously. Um, so that is a good reason why we've got kind of the slit here. It does kind of work around that. You can see it's a little bunched up above. Um, so you could, I guess, put this over it. But then we can just fold this around the arms there. And the cool thing is, is like because of those bendy wires, you really can like kind of pose it and position it in a spot where it looks as best as possible. You can lay the bandana around over it and uh, it looks really, really great once you get it on the figure there. Now we've got two more accessories and those are the two parts of the samurai helmet. Now they all come uh, with the same pieces, although the mustaches appear to be some different colors. Like you can see we've got like a purpley mustache. Let me get, make sure I get a focus here. <laughs> um, like, like you can see this one right here on the right's got like a purpley mustache, but this one is more of a black mustache. We've got like a dark brown and a light brown. Um, so match those up, I suppose. But just to show you guys how this works, um, these mask pieces will fit over the back of the head, but they don't go over the bandana knot. You just kind of place them on the back of the head and then you slide it down over the mouth and they fit really good. I mean, they sit in place. Um, you don't have to really worry about it falling off unless you hit it with my like your finger like I just did, but it stays really, really secure on there. With the helmets, they've got this little clip on the inside that you can see that is shaped like the knot on their bandanas. So you find the right spot and you can clip it in place. Now I will say it doesn't always work as good as I would like it to. And it's really easy to bump these off even when you do have them clipped to the bandana knots. Uh, I've really noticed that just while posing them around while I was photographing them, I was constantly knocking the helmets off. They seem to stay fine. Like if you're just going to pose it on your shelf like this, it seems to stay on just fine. Um, just be, you know, warned. They, they bump off real easy, just like that. So, but that right there completes the look of our samurai turtle. So we'll go ahead and bring the other brothers in here now so we can get a good look at these guys. And uh, we got to start, of course, with them with the armor uh, off or the masks off, the helmets off, because you got to take a look at those amazing head sculpts there, uh, all of which just as goofy as Leo's. You can see Donnie's got a big smile on his face. Uh, here is a far less menacing Raphael than we saw with the other movies. And Mikey, you know, Mikey still just kind of looks like Mikey. <laughs> but look at those big teeth, man. Those big goofy teeth that we saw in this movie. I love it. Now, all of these guys come with swappable heads. Um, which is really amazing because, again, the guys at NECA did such a good job of sculpting these masks and some of the different weird ways that their mouths move and those animatronic masks that they're wearing in the film. So you got alternate masks uh, or heads for Michelangelo. Raphael, I love this angry Raphael face. Look at that with those teeth gritting there. 
Uh, same with Leo. Leo's also got an exceptionally angry face with just the weirdest mouth position. <laughs> And Donnie. Donnie's also angry. We got three very serious heads. And then Mikey, you know, he's just being Mikey. Uh, but of course, these are easily swapped off like we've seen in the past. Just by popping the head off the ball joint. You can pop the new one on in its place. Let's give it a nice firm press. It locks on there. And that way you can get a much more serious looking turtle. Uh, if that is your desired look for the characters. Of course, all of our turtles do come with their signature weapons. Donnie's got his bow staff, and we can get him to hold that uh, with both hands pretty easily. Michelangelo has got his nunchucks. These are done very similar to the ones that came with the uh, Secret of the Ooze Michelangelo, where they've got a bendy wire in the middle, though I will say uh, not quite as bendy as the one from Secret of the Ooze. Like, it doesn't hold poses as good as that one, but it is decent. Um, so that way we've got Michelangelo and we can pose those nunchucks around a little bit. And we've got Raphael with his signature size. And one thing I really like about this, of course, is like, this is like my test for all Raphael figures. The hands perfectly fit the fingers around the blades of the side. Uh, that actually pairs up really well with your angry Raphael face. I like it quite a bit. So we've actually got a slew of interchangeable hands here. And like a lot of the NECA figure sets, the hands are kind of meant to be used for any of the turtles. So they are not turtle specific. Each of them come out of the package with the standard gripping hands. Uh, with Mikey, I actually did swipe swap on a pair of tighter gripping hands. Um, so out of the box, he's got the same looser grip that all of the turtles have. But in order to get him to hold on to the nunchucks, I had to swap on the tighter grip. In addition to that, you've got a pair of open hands you've got the pointing hands uh and you've also got closed fists uh for doing some fighting with the other guys so really fun stuff and again those are as easy as just pulling the current hands out of socket it might be a little tough the first time you do it but it just has those little pegs so that you can easily swap in the extra hands and that way you can change up your posing just a bit so we have a few other accessories included as well. First of all, we have two different swords uh, from that English army that they are facing in the movie. This, of course, is so you can recreate scenes from the film, like Michelangelo going, ooh, swords, and grabbing these two swords to do a little bit of fighting. So that's pretty cool stuff. And of course, you cannot have a TMNT 3 set without the Time Scepter. And in fact, we get three time scepters with this particular set so we've got the main time scepter here which of course you can see is a little more clean it's got the japanese writing on there it's got a nice shiny gold i love the little hourglass that's made of like translucent plastic on the inside of these little plastic windows here it's very cool looking then we have the antique version of it which is the modern times version you know because we got one in the present one in the past and that's how we swap places but this one is also the version that's all busted up. You can see the top looks like it's a little melted there. Um, you know, all the little windows are broken and cracked. Uh, and of course, it's just dirtier and dingier than the uh, regular version there. So that is pretty cool. But we've also got the little uh, homemade version there. So Donnie can try to build a new Time Scepter while they're tracking down the real Time Scepter. Uh, really fun stuff. I think these are great inclusions with this particular set. You know, one of the other things I really wanted to show you guys is this. Um, obviously, horses are in the movie. We've got a scene where they're on the horses when they first teleport back to feudal Japan. So this horse here is from the Mythic Legions toy line from Four Horsemen Design. Uh, and as you can see, it is pretty much perfectly scaled uh for these turtles figures i don't know if we're gonna get like proper horses for this line i think the chances are probably slim but i guess never say never with neca tmnt but there are options out there uh and these guys look pretty great riding on these horses so just throwing that out there if any of you guys want to spend more money and <laughs> get horses for these guys you've got options all right my friends it's comparison time. Let's go ahead and start by standing these guys alongside the other NECA movie figures. I just think it's really interesting to see the evolution from TMNT 1, from Secret of the Ooze, to TMNT 3. Uh, you could really see how wacky 
the designs are in the heads, especially. But looking, lining these guys up, man, this is just so much fun. And I can't believe that we've got these as action figures. Like, when the first figures came out from that first movie, it was mind-blowing that we were finally getting figures that look just like the movies. And now we've got it for all three of them. Unbelievable. And just for fun, let's go and stand them alongside the vintage TMNT3 action figures from Playmates Toys. And as I was getting them out for this video, I realized I apparently don't have Donatello from that line. So now I've got something new to hunt down. Neat. So there you go, my friends. There is a look at the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 3 action figure box set from NECA Toys. Uh, look, all in all, I think these are awesome. They are really, really well done. And it's so hilarious that we can get such cool toys from a movie that, man, is not really that good. And I think a lot of people probably feel the same way. And if you don't, that's fine. Like, it's certainly got its merit. It certainly makes me laugh at how goofy it is. Uh, but look, I love these. I'm so glad that we have these. And again, it's just one of those things I never thought we'd see. And here we are with them. I think it's awesome. So these were sold exclusively at San Diego Comic-Con. They also sold them through pre-orders on their website, which is where I bought mine. I have no idea yet if there are plans to release these at stores, but they've always found ways to do it in the past, so it's always possible. Thank you guys so very much for watching this video, and until next time.